Hola Ricardo. Hola. ¿Todo bien? Todo bien, todo bien. Estaba regresando con una taza de té y te di conectado. Ah, sí, sí me conecté. La conferencia es abierta, ¿verdad? Sí, está ah, abierta para observadores. Okay. ¿Todo bien por ahí? Todo bien, todo bien. Un poco tarde para mí, son las 11 de la noche. Wow, acá son las, casi las 11 de la mañana. Buen horario para ti. Sí, la verdad que sí. <risa> ¿Y van a salir de vacaciones ahí? ¿eh? Sí, estamos planeando salir de vacaciones eh, al sudeste de, de Asia. Ah, está. Eh, tres semanas. Bien, bien. Excelente. ¿Y ustedes? No, eh, paramos ahí antes de, de la Navidad y uh -huh. también unos días antes de, 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 de inicio de año y solamente eso. Muy bien. está empezando a unir la gente. Ah. <risa> bueno, hablamos después. <risa> Perfecto. Como hora de trabajar para mí. <risa> Suerte. Gracias.
ये देखो ये फोन में हो नहीं रहा हेलो ये बच्चे कुछ स्पीकिंग गुड मॉर्निंग दिस इज नीको स्कैपर Hi Nico, this is Herman, and welcome to the call. Uh, waiting for other members of the Chris team to join us. Okay, okay. Hi, hi, hi Nico, hi Herman. I am Esteban Lescano uh, from Argentina. Hi Esteban, good day, welcome. Thank you. Bill Woodcock here. I made it onto the call, but I may be uh, uh, muted for a while. Hi. Uh, it was Bill Woodcock. Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Hi, Bill. Hello? Hello? Yes, hi. Who is speaking? Hello, I'm Dr. Govind speaking. Hi, Dr. Govind. Welcome. This is Herman Valdez. Yeah. We can yeah. hear you very well. Hi. We are waiting yeah. for to, others to join us. Hello to everyone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Who, who all are, have joined? Well, Pardon? Herman, this is Michael Abiquela. Just wanted to make sure... You got me too. Mm -hmm. And Sweeting's here too. Michael. Okay. Hello, this is Mwendwa Kivuva uh, from Nairobi, Kenya. Welcome. Yes, Mwendwa Kivuva. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I can. Hello, Abina. I'm Dr. Group. Govind from India. Okay. Having a quick look to the uh, who is in the call right now, I can see that we are just missing Ernest Bioranga uh, from Afinic. Um, Andres Piazza for LACNIC, and I think that's the only two um, Chris team members that are not in the call. So I think uh, um, in six minutes after the, the time, I wonder um, if you would like to proceed. 
German. This is Nico Schaper from the London mm -hmm. region. Uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, Andres uh, is having a problem logging in with his laptop. I'm trying to assist him here remotely to see if he can uh, log in, but uh, um, it will take a couple of minutes. But if if we need to start, we just start, and then uh, he will uh, he will uh, log in in a moment. I'm gonna try and send him the link through Skype because he has some issues with his email. Okay, understood. Thank you, Nico. So I'm Dr. Govind from Ethnic Region, India. Yes, Dr. Govind. German, this is Andre. Hi, everyone. I, I think it would be useful if we do a roll call and everyone has an opportunity to introduce themselves. Because yes, I, don't I was going to. Team and I don't know all the people on the call. I think that would be much, much more useful. All right. So I, I was just about to suggest the same. So, if you agree, I would like to start with a roll call and I will ask the person that I named to introduce uh, himself or herself. Um, so, everybody in the call can become a little bit familiar with the voice and the, and the, and the background. I will start, I will take this by region. So, I will start uh, with Afrinik, with um, Alan Barrett. Uh, hello, this is Alan Barrett. Um, I'm present on the call. Um, I volunteered for the, the CRIS team in the Afrinic region and the, the Afrinic board appointed me. Thank you, Alan. I have is Wenduaki Vuva. Mr. Kibuba, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I am a volunteer for the Chris team. Uh, representing Afrinic region. Thank you. Thank you. It is Ernest Vioranga in the call. No, Ernest is He's not in the call, but uh, we are looking for him. Thank you. I will move now to the Arian region. Uh, Bill Woodcock. Come on, he might, he might be still on mute. He said he had to be on mute oh, for a little sorry. while. Yeah, Bill, Bill Woodcock here. Yep. Thank you, Bill. John Sweeting? Yeah, hi, this is John Sweeting. Um, I volunteered for the Chris team, was selected. I'm also uh, have been a member of the uh, Aaron Advisory Council, very active in the in the internet community, the numbers community here in North America. Um, I've been the uh, chair of the Advisory Council for Aaron for a lot of time. Thank you, John. Um, I will move to uh, Michael Abequela. Hello, everybody. This is Michael Abequela. I am uh, Aaron's in-house counsel and the staff uh, appointed a representative on the first team for Aaron. Michael, I will move now to the Phoenix region. Um, Dr. Govin. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Govin. I'm from India. I've been appointed by ethnic region. I work in the internet community. We have a third largest internet users in the world, 260 plus million users. And we have a 900 plus million mobiles. So I look forward to working for this wonderful CRISP community along with other regions of the world, Arin, Afrinic, Latinic, etc. Thanks. Thank you also, Robin. Uh, Isumi Akutani. Hello, everybody. This is Isumi Akutani. I'm working for JPNIC and representing the APNIC region for the CRISP team. I'm very much looking forward 
um, to working with you all in developing um, good uh, policies of proposal for uh, for the numbers community. Thank you. Hi, Zumi here, Govind here. Hello, good Dr. Govin. It's very nice um, oh, yeah. having you here. Yeah, thank, thank you, Zumi. You. And Craig, Andrew? Everyone, this is uh, Craig Inn. I'm the General Counsel or Legal Counsel for APNIC. Um, I'm a non-voting staff member, um, and I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Moving now to last division, Stefan Lescano. Stefan, you are in, you are in mute. Sorry. Hi. Uh, I am Stefan Lescano. I am the general counsel of Cavate, which is the ISP Association of Argentina. And I am very happy to join the, the Chris team with uh, all of you. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, Nico Sepa. Yes, I am Nico Sepa, uh, based in the Caribbean. I am responsible for the uh, M6 Amsterdam Internet Exchange Caribbean. And uh, in this team, I'm uh, representing the LACNIC region. Thank you, uh, Nico. It is Andres Piazza, Nico? Not as yet. Um, oh, okay. He will follow in a, in a couple of minutes. Okay, thank you, Nico. Uh, moving to right, uh, NCC region, uh, Nurani Nimpuno? Yes, hello. I'm Nurani Nimpuno. I'm one of the right uh, region community members. Looking forward to working with you all. Thank you, Norani. Uh, Mr. Andrei Robachevsky. Hi, I'm Andrei Robachevsky. Hi, everyone. I'm looking forward to working with all of you. I was following IAN development for quite some time now. I also participate in the IAN discussions at the IETF. So hopefully we'll have very fruitful and useful discussions here. Uh, and the last but not the least, Paul Rendek. Hello, everyone. I'm Paul Rendek, uh, the Director of External Relations for the Right NCC. I am the uh, Right NCC staff onto the Chris team, and I also very much look forward to working with all of you. Thank you, Paul. So we have a very good number of attendees. Uh, for this Chris, uh, first Chris teleconference. We are just missing Ernest and Andres, but besides that, I think we have a, a good amount of uh, members of the team. So, um, as the first point of the agenda um, is the discussion and selection of chair by chair, uh, I hope there is no problem for you to <laughs> I give this uh, uh, role of uh, trying to kick off the meeting so I will ask first, I'm displaying right now the agenda. It was shared by Paul Rendek. And if you would like to have any changes or additions to the agenda that I'm displaying right now on the WebEx platform, uh, those who are using the phone, um, I think the, the agenda has been shared in the list. So if, if there is any points that you'd like to add or change, If not, I uh, will move to the uh, to the first point of the agenda, which is the um, discussion of the chair and vice chair of the CRISP team. Um, he has discussed in the many lists that uh, um, people start to submit preference of the chairs and vice chairs. There is no specific uh, procedures. There is some names that have been uh, presented in the list, but I would like to open the floor here if there is any comments and how do we would like to proceed on this point. I think 
think we have a four names, uh, John Sweeting from Aaron, Aaron Barrett from Afrinic, Esteban Lesekano from Latnic, and Izumi from Apnic. Am I right? That is, so, yes, that's correct. That is John Sweeting from Arin, Esteban Lescano from Lachnik, Alan Barrett from Afrinic, and Isumi from Sani. Are you willing to, to serve in that role, or one of the two roles, or all four accepting of, I guess, the nomination? This is John, yes, I do. Is it me speaking? Yes, I do. Esteban Lescano, yes, I do. Uh, this is Alan Barrett, yes, I accept the nomination. Is there any other names that are missing or would like to extend themselves to run for the chair or vice chair of the Chris team? If not, I think it would be good if we could close then for these four names. Um, it was suggested that you will submit the name of the uh, nominee you would like to vote. Um, it was also suggested that only one name would be submitted. Uh, the truth is that I don't have not all the emails right now, so I don't know how do you like to proceed. You want to keep this procedure by email, or you would like to have a open vote in the in the call? But uh, that's just up to you. And this is the first thing I would like to ask and discuss here. This is Bill. Uh, I think we would be best served to move forward uh, quickly, and so I would like to propose that we uh, just conduct a roll call vote right now and then we'll be over and done with it. Thank you, Bill, and that will be my preference as well. If no, may, that's thank you, Norani. Is any, uh, any other comment? Uh, this is Nico Schaper. I support that. I second it. Okay, thank you, Nico. Bill Woodcock, who was asking for the make a roll call and do the voting right now, is supported by Nurani and Nico. So unless I hear any advice against this suggestion, motion, I will start the roll call. Um, I have a question. Um, this is Isumi speaking. Um, do candidates get to vote as well? And um, is there any restriction? on who we can vote if we're a candidate. I just want to be clear about the process. No procedure. There is no uh, formal procedure has been discussed in the selection of the chair of the vice chair. So I don't see any restriction right now to vote uh, um, uh, for a specific or for yourself. The only aspect I think that has been discussed so far is it's only one name be, be, be mentioned. I was Any other comments? If not, I will start the roll call and I would leave the four nominees at the end. Okay? So I will start with uh, Mr. Kubiba. Okay. I vote for Alan Barrett. Ah. Uh. Mr. Bill Woodcock. Alan Barrett. Thank you, Bill. John Sweeting. 
I'm sorry, no, I'll let John sit into the end. Sorry, John. Dr. Kobe. Yeah. Dr. Kobe? Uh, this is for the chair's position? Yes. Yeah, I vote for uh, Izumi. Thank you, Dr. Gong. Esteban Lescano. Ah, sorry, Esteban is candidate. Nico Shepard. Yes. Um, I vote for Esteban Lezano as chair. Thank you, Nico. Nurami Nipuno? I vote for Izumi Okitani. Nurani. Andrei Robachevsky? Izumi Akutani. Okay. I will start with the nominees. The first name I have is Alan Barrett. Uh, I abstain. Thank you, Alan. John Sweeting. Izumi. Thank you, John. Stan, let's Isumi Okutani, sorry. I'd like to abstain as well. Stan Lescano. Isumi Okutani. Okay. Nico, you have your, your microphone open and you are having some no, uh, sounds in your background. Just give me a sec. Okay, I have um, five votes for Sumi Okutani, two for Alan Barrett, one for Esteban Lescano, and two abstentions. I have drawn this roll call and the assumption that according to the to the chapter, the voting members are are the only one to vote, and I have left the uh, the staff I point in the process of uh, Selection. So, in case you have any comment on that, um, that would be the result. So, I repeat again: five votes for Isumi Kutani, two votes for Alan Barry, one vote for Esteban Lescano, and two abstentions. So, I move to accept Isumi Kutani as the chair, and Alan Barrett as the vice chair of the Chris team. Having a, Alan, the second place in the number of votes casted. Any comment? Congratulations, Mo. Congratulations, Izumi and Ellen. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Congratulations, to Izumi. Congratulations, I'm Izumi in uh, Alan. from India. And Alan. So, Izumi, I will pass the floor to you, and you will run the, the session from from here. And you will have Alan, Alan, as you. Uh, my share, so you can rely on him and any 
matters in the <laughs> in the sharing of this uh, of this team. Congratulations to Thank you very much all. So I hear somebody yes. Could somebody mute the mic? Thank you. So I I'm not gonna make you know really big thank you speech and all and I just feel that we have a great team, so let's just uh be efficient and uh I'll focus on developing good proposal before the deadline. And um so up on the agenda, um I see a couple of um, points on working methods, which I do hope to have some clarifications of um, Paul or perhaps for Herman on what were the intentions of these uh, bullet points on um, what was listed on working method one, such as the mailing list, teleconference, decision making mechanism, and drafting tools. And I'm happy to take over in details of discussions on scope of activities in producing an ICG. RFP response. So, uh, would uh, either Paul or uh, Herman be um, able to clarify what were the topics that uh, was initially intended to um, discuss on um, point number one, starting with the mailing list? Or if there's, there wasn't really much uh, concrete idea and was just uh, put on the table, I'm happy to proceed and um, I'll state for how we can um, yeah. end with the discussion. So we, um, I, have, um, I have comments um the aspect of the teleconference, the, the quorum, the timeline for the conference. Um, the quorum is, is um, there is no, um, definition yet of uh, of quorum for for having the the teleconference, uh, and I think it's, it's an important aspect that needs to be discussed. And um, if I'm uh, allowed to say, given the time constraints, I think the, the definition of quorum needs to be very relaxed. There are uh, a lot of work ahead, and maybe a small time, a few times, to develop all the work. And the other is in order to provide uh, support to the three team from the secretariat, it would be great to have a, a timeline for the teleconference so I can have, I can have um, clear date and times where you are expecting to have the secretariat support. Um, uh, there is, is, is holiday season and uh, the availability of RIR staff is, is uh, uh, reduces on this time, so it would be great if I can have this information ahead so I can plan it. Uh, as you know, the, the, the NRO Secretariat rotates every year. Uh, this time it will be like Nick staff that will help me to give support to the TRIS team. Um, I'm suggesting to have uh, uh, notes for each meeting, um, uh, something that we can, can be shared in the IANA transfer in the room and the list. Uh, after the conclusion of each teleconference, so for the sake of transparency, we can and provide these uh, notes for each teleconference. So um, that would be the two points uh, regarding the teleconference I would like to um, call to, re to uh, your attention to be discussed in this, in this call. Um, thank you very much, Roman. So, um, I would still like to discuss about the mailing list, but uh, since uh, you've shared um, some of the points that we'd like to uh, discuss for the teleconference, um, let me um, see how people feel about the quorum. So we do have uh, 15 members um, as the Chris team, and um, we want to set the minimum number of um, participants for the um, teleconference to be uh, considered as uh, effective? Um, and if yes, um, what would be the numbers that people would feel would be com comfortable enough to consider that there has been effective uh, discussion yeah. among the two? Rani. Uh, th this is Mwendwa Kivuva. I pro I propose we have 
five voting members as quorum. This is Bill, I second that. Um, I think I, I heard um so you mentioned that there's five voting members. So Yes, five voting members to constitute a quorum. That is half. Okay. That is of the fifteen people in the crisp only five five people should constitute quorum of the voting members. Okay, that's your suggestion. I understood. So I suppose the idea is out of fifteen, um five uh from RIR staff, so maybe half of the representatives from the um, the RIR. Um, I see. I think I heard Bill or somebody speak, and I also have Nurani. So I uh, would Bill mind to repeat That's what you mentioned, yeah. and then this is Bill. I just said I second that. Uh, five also five. Five. Okay. Inappropriate. Okay. Thank you. And Nurani. Thank you, Sumi. Um, I'm, I'm happy with uh, five, but I do think that we should actually have at least one community member from each region, especially if we're going to share the burden of, of uh, awkward telephone conference times. I think it might be uh, a bit discriminatory against the region if it's in the middle of the night and that means that, that region is uh, excluded because of the awkward um, um, phone conference time. So I would like to propose that we have at least one voting member, or one community member from each region, and that can constitute the quorum. Thank you. Thanks, Nurani. That actually makes a lot of sense. And okay, Alan. Uh, Alan Barrett, I support the idea of having the quorum be one member, one voting member from each of the five regions. Thanks, Alan. Um, does anybody feel differently? Anybody feels differently from Nirani's proposal? So to repeat, um, having one member from um, each of the five RIR region uh, at the minimum. So the total is five, but make sure that um, each region is represented. If anybody feels against it, uh, please raise it uh, now, either on the chat or uh, raise your hand. Is, is it me? Each member from a five are yours. One from each RIR, at least. The so total okay. is five, but each from each RIR. <laughs> Did somebody else want to just speak? Yeah, do a poll rather than the line. Oh, cool. Sure. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, hi there, uh, Zumi. Um, I, I just got back from the NRO EC meeting that was held in Mauritius, and uh, some of these points were brought up to the NRO EC uh, to see what they thought, because they obviously were not included inside the charter. Um, as far as the quorum for teleconferences, uh, the advice that was given by the NROEC was that there shouldn't be a limit or, you know, no, no number set on what would be quorum. Uh, we have a very aggressive deadline that we need to reach, and I think it's going to be very difficult if we even see the timeline of teleconferences growing, because I imagine it will grow from the current proposal of the draft set of teleconferences that was sent out to the whole list of the CRISP team. And if that does grow, I think it'll be difficult to find the five uh, people, one from each region, that can commit to each one of those calls. So effectively, you will be holding up a discussion uh, because of that reason. I think that it's probably better to take a look at the decision-making mechanism and understand how that can be done so that you wouldn't have any decisions made without kind of, you know, uh, maybe mailing list or what have you, uh, maybe not have it on the telephone conferences. but. I think if you put a number like this on here, we might be um, we might be uh, holding ourselves back from reaching our target. Thanks, Paul, for raising this uh, very important point. And we really have to uh, be realistic and uh, what can be accomplished, as you mentioned, uh, with this uh, type 
timeline. So um, how do others feel about this? Um, it may be that we do try to encourage within our region to make sure that we have somebody from our region represented, but we don't define it as a quorum. That may be something that would be realistic. Um, how do others feel about this? This is Bill. Uh, I'd like to propose a slight modification to the quorum definition then. Uh, how about the call is whoever is on the call, uh, and each call can be associated with a 24-hour window of email discussion, and anyone who participates in discussion or casts a vote or whatever uh, during that 24-hour window be counted as having participated for the purposes of quorum. Thank you, Bill. It's slightly difficult to hear you clearly, but if I understood you all properly, then it's not just the quorum is not just counted uh, um, with the teleconference, but if there's any vote, then online participation is also counted. Is that what you said? Um, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that, you very well. Yes, yes, that's correct. I suggested that a 24-hour window be associated with each call. So anyone who participates online within the next 24 hours uh, discussing issues that were raised on the call or voting or whatever also be counted as having participated for the purposes of quorum. Sure. So if that is any decision, in case any decision making is required. Understood. So um, does anybody else feel differently about uh, Bill's suggestion? Yeah, 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 this is Ernest. Uh, this is Ernest from Africa. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to also underscore what Paul uh, Rendick said earlier, mm -hmm. that, uh, the, uh, that according to the Charter, the Charter actually does not uh, 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 does not put a, a limit on what quorum should be for the meetings, but rather on the decision-making process. And, uh, yeah, I also wanted to point that out and uh, make sure that the team is aware of that. And if that were to change, then indeed the NRO issue would have to make a change in the charter itself. Uh, I kind of I was going to propose uh, 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 what Bill Woodcock said, that in fact a time window instead be given, uh, say 24 to 48 hours, so that any decision made can actually be. Thank you, Ernest. So it seems that uh, people are support uh, polls what what Paul raised, and um, it make it might make sense to move to discuss decision making mechanism. If there's nobody else who feels differently or have concerns about um, not setting a clear um, forum, and um, consider um, I think 24 hours window for any decision making process required. Okay, so um, let's. Um, well, I still have um, IANA and our all mailing list and the timeline for teleconference, but I would like to first move to uh, discuss about decision-making mechanism and then um, go back to discuss about a little bit more details on how we can communicate. So, um, what would be... I, well, according to what I read from the Chris um, team document, it says that we'll try to work on consensus as much as possible, and then in case that um, there's any decision required for voting, then we will make decisions by voting. And I think the number is already um, defined. So what we might want to agree on would be what would be the kind of things that would um, require uh, definitely, decision definitely should be made by voting or anything else to note about in terms of decision making mechanism. Anybody have any ideas that they want to share? Uh, I saw me. <coughs> Sorry, this Herman. Yes. Um, this this point was discussed in the NROEC retreat uh, last week. And the expectation in 
uh, on this on this aspect is about the final draft to be submitted will be the only discussion that would require um, the use of the supermajority criteria. So anything else, I think this potential will be to work on the consensus, except for the last for the definition on the last on the last draft to be submitted by the the, the CRISP team. That is consistent with my uh, personal assumption as well. But um, if anybody feels anybody else feel differently or have any questions, then um, please feel free to um, raise it now. Uh, Alan Barrett. Sure, Alan. Yeah. Uh, so it seems to me unlikely that we would have any need to vote on anything at all except possibly for the final document. Um, so I, I think we don't need to spend any more time on this. The, we, should, we should aim to reach consensus and uh, in the end if we somehow fail to reach consensus then there's a requirement that, that we can vote and 8 out of 10 can approve it and really that's all we need to do. Thanks, Alan. So um, it seems that nobody else have um, other comments. Uh, let's move on. So I think the other points would be more of administrative agreements that um, so we will basically be using IANO X for at NRO mailing list. Um, we try to be as transparent as possible and. In case that there are any discussions that needs to be done that's not relevant to the public, which I don't really see any big agenda, um, we may uh, try to communicate privately. But I think the, the basis of our communications would be on this domain list that's listed here. Raising hands regarding IANA mailing is Andre. Thank you, Izumi. Um, I totally agree with you. I think openness, transparency, extremely important in this process, and IANA transfer is, is this vehicle to communicate. But I just want to bring two issues to your attention. One issue is that IANA transfer, as it's currently set up, is open for posting for non-CRIS members. And uh, I think we saw entertaining discussion on IANA transfer, which was also actually conducted not, not by CRIS members. I think if that continues to be the case, the efficiency of IANA transfer as a medium for discussions will be seriously undermined. Secondly, I think we have a very top a timeline, right? We all agree. And I think we would need, uh, that's my feeling, and that's what I also saw in the uh, IETF process, that we need some cycles, some iterations uh, to do internally, right? Uh, not necessarily in public, and release new uh, drafts uh, more frequently to public. Uh, so either we uh, change the setup of IANA transfer, that would be my uh, second suggestion, and make public archives of IANA transfer, but not allow non-members of the CRISP team to actually participate in IANA transfer. Or another setup would be to create a private mailing list for efficiency purposes and use IANA transfer as a um, tool to discuss the proposal with the community, uh, where a community can also respond and participate on an IANA transfer uh, together with CRISP members. And that would be my preference, honestly. This is Bill. I agree with Andre uh, about the latter uh, being the preferred method, uh, new mailing list for internal discussion. Thanks, Andre. I think that makes a lot of sense. So, um, anybody else have other comments? Narani here. Can I just make a very quick comment? Uh, I'd, like, I'd like to support Andre's suggestion, and, and I think what we all need to be really very aware of is, is the incredibly aggressive timeline we have in front of us. Uh, so, I do think we need to find mechanisms of of uh, of, of uh, <laughs> Well, helping us move forward and, and get the, the job done within the very short timeline we have. 
So I'd like to support Aunt Ray's suggestion. Thanks. So if nobody else has other opinions, then um, let's create another separate mailing list among the uh, Chris members that's closed. And then if we need to communicate um, and consult our community, then we use the IANA transfer and our own mailing list. So if that's agreed, um, let's proceed with this direction. This for me? Yep. I can help you with that. Uh, in fact, there is a ticket open right now with um, Ryan CC, which is the they host the NRO and ASO infrastructure. So the ticket is open, um, and if you agree with that, uh, I will follow up with the creation of a fifty member mailing list and submit the information soon. That's great, Herman. So thanks very much. And um, so I, I suppose you will let, let us know once the mailing list is fixed, and we can start working on that mailing list once it's ready. That's correct. Could be an action on me. OK, thanks. So um, we are left with 12 minutes and we want to cover the scope of activity and um, also um, the next step for the next call. I do recall, I think Michael has some set um, the timeline for the teleconferences and including the deadline. Is it possible to show it here on the screen? Working on it. Okay. And if I recall correctly, I think the next call after this is scheduled um, two days later. And supposing that, um, well, I'd be happy to hear if any feedback about this uh, scheduling. And um, supposing that we will have the next call in a very short timeline. Um, I would like to um, start considering what can we do between ourselves as homework before the next call. So yeah, thank you, Herman. So we're on the first teleconference. And then the second one is planned in two days um, on the 11th. I'm sure we have to uh, still figure out the time zones and which time would be appropriate. And based and I think the final deadline, so the teleconference is planned for one, two, three, four, four teleconferences, five teleconferences planned, and uh, we will the target to share the draft with the community um, will be the fifth of January, and um, we'll try to start with the first draft of the um, proposal. In, on the 15th, which is actually in six days. This, if we try to um, look at the schedule uh, back from the deadline, I think this looks like a quite realistic uh, um, schedule. Does anybody have any comments about the schedule? This is Bill. I propose that we retain the same meeting time for each future meeting. Uh, it's 5 a.m. for me, so I'm doubting that it's much worse for anyone else. And if I prefer to just meet at 5 a.m. rather than argue about it each time, um, I hope other people can as well. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you, Bill. We can maybe um, confirm if we can retain the same time or not uh, online unless others feel uh, strongly about with, uh, the time zone and scheduling. And I'm personally quite happy with uh, keeping the same time. So maybe we can uh, take a poll about this uh, later, perhaps with uh, Herman's help. And um, if nobody has strong opinion about the schedule, I think I want to start discussing about what we oh, hands. Yes. Andre. Uh, 
engineer here, Dr. Govind here. I just wanted this tip. Generally, the uh, uh, day when you uh, give the proposal to the committee. When do we uh, share the proposal with the community? Is that your question, Dr. Govind? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yes. My current understanding is the 5th of January, but I don't know if others feel that that might be too late and we are actually targeting um, the first uh, sharing um, sometime in December, which I actually currently says the 15th of December at this stage. And well, this is, of course, it's just a tentative schedule, so it can be moved. Um, so definitely of uh, sometime in January on the 5th, it says at the moment. And how do others feel about making it earlier? Is that possible? So 15th of January. That's the target Zemir. to share with every, everybody. Good. Zemir, this is Andre. If I may just jump in, I think, yes, we need to share a first draft of the proposal with the community SAP, but I think we all understand that this draft has to be prepared. I think what we saw, we saw a draft proposal from the um, from some of the areas, their thoughts, right? But I think we need some uh, draft consolidated proposal so we can discuss. I think the internal mailing list is a, is a great aid in this direction. And I think we need to maybe um, have a few volunteers that can draft this first uh, text, first response of the proposal that would re reflect maybe some of the thoughts that we um, so, um, you know, floating in other communities. Um, I myself, uh, if, if that kind of uh, agreed way of, of working, I would certainly uh, volunteer to shoulder that effort because I think we need to have a few iterations internally before we can release this draft to uh, the community. I think what it says now in the timeline, it's very aggressive, but I don't see how we can get it otherwise, is to release the first draft for comment on the 50th of December, which actually gives uh, not very much time for the community to digest and comment and for us to respond and incorporate this feedback in the process and then release the second draft on the 5th of January. So I think it's very critical that we work on this first draft, uh, internal draft, that we can discuss as a crisp team first before we release this to public. Yes, agreed. So, proposing that uh, we will first release the first draft on the 15th, as listed on the schedule, then I think it will be helpful to have the draft as a crisp team one or two days before this, so that we can actually collaborate a little bit on some of the differences, and then release it on the, on, on the public mailing list. And uh, thank you, Andre, for volunteering, and um, I think there's a couple of ways of uh, how we can work on the draft, either by depart, dep dividing by sections or have, having a couple of volunteers work on it and uh, try to merge on the differences. Um, I do notice that there's actually a draft already ready um, on some of the regions. But there are some regional differences on the proposed point. So is, is it me? Yes. Hi, is it me? It's, it's Paul here. Um, I'd like to just give some uh, suggestions if I could. Um, I'm seeing that because we've started, I mean, when this first draft uh, timeline went out, it had an initial call that would have happened some five days ago. I think we are five days down the road from that. So I think it's pretty, wow, it's pretty aggressive to think that we could have a first draft by the 15th, uh, seeing that we only have three days left of, 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 this, uh, of this week. Um, what, I, what I would like to do is, first of all, the, te the list of teleconferences, nobody's really commented on the amount of them. I would like to add one more teleconference on the Monday, the 15th, 
just to have it in there. It, it doesn't have to be used if we're moving along nicely, but it would be nice to have another one scheduled in there because I think from the 11th to the 18th is a really big jump, and um, it would be great to have uh, something scheduled for the 15th as well. Like we said, we don't have to have everybody on the call, but those that can get on the call and sort some things out with their voices, it's, it's also, uh, it helps us very much for those that, that, that will, would only be able to participate via the mailing list because the discussion would end up there afterwards. The draft uh, RFP response that's scheduled for the 15th, <clears throat> my feeling is that that can be pushed back a little bit into the week. Somewhere around maybe the 18th, uh, it can be probably sent out to the community. I think that from the initial draft, if we have something out by around the 18th and collect the feedback up until basically end of the year, because there are just a, a few days in between Christmas and New Year where people do pop up, um, we could then uh, continue to get the feedback over that time and then on the 5th produce something that's a little bit more finalized. And my proposal, there's a third thing I'd like to add to this. My proposal for this, Izumi, because you've already asked how we can go about doing this, Andre has mentioned that he would like to, uh, to, be, uh, to lead some of the drafting there. In the agenda later on, there is, there is a proposal to split the material. Um, I think that we can already go ahead and draft some of the pieces, particularly points one and two out of the RFP response, because I think those are probably very it's easy text to generate that we would probably all agree on quite quickly. So if we can attack that and, and get the drafting going and get it onto the list, we can already see one and two kind of get some movement. I think where we need to have more discussion would be on points three and four in the RFP. And while, while that's being drafted, discussion can be happening on those points so that we're not losing time because again, I have to state this on the call, this is such an aggressive timeline that I think we need to make sure we can isolate the areas that, we're, with that need some further discussion or compromise and have those discussions on these teleconferences. The rest can be drafted uh, quite nicely once those agreements are there. Thank you very much, Paul, for um, clarifying the important points. Um, so, what I'd like to do is uh, seek for um, volunteers who are willing to draft uh, section one and two, which probably, um, as you mentioned, is describing the current state. So uh, it's able to draft without much consultation or like um, or coordination. And then we can just uh, look at the wording once the draft is ready. And then um, to start with point three, point three and four, I do observe some regional differences, so we may want to start discussions on what are the important points and um, have some discussions on the mailing first. And then um, maybe we can um, talk a little bit more verbally on the teleconference. And then once we have a rough agreement about the general direction, then we can again seek for um, volunteers. Um, on drafting it. So, um, how do others feel about um, this this proceeding? Uh, is it yes. Hi, it's it's Craig in here. I'm just wondering whether it might be helpful um, for me to sort of outline sort of where the position is. Um, we've had a, a luxury, the five of us, the staff, uh, Chris representative meeting in um, Mauritius recently and we've had a chance to actually sit down and talk about the regional differences and mm, I think great. we have come to some accommodation and, and compromise around how how we might be able to um, synchronize all you know the three proposals that's currently on the table between AP, NIC, uh, LACNIC and RIPE. Wonderful. So are you saying that you may be able to draft, um, develop a draft that covers all sections and considering the differences, or are you saying that you're able to give us a summary of the differences? Uh, I'm happy to give a summary here now, and, and it, um, if we need to have that reduced to, uh, you know, to a draft, I'm, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, um, or, or I'm happy to work with uh, uh, anyone else, uh, Stephen, uh, in relation to that. Um, but 
if, if it's helpful, um, I can outline, you know, what the current status is really in relation to the three proposals that's on the table. Great, that would be wonderful. How much time um, do we have? We actually, we don't have that much time, but I think we, it would still be of an interest for all if others are able to stay to hear uh, from Craig what the differences are. Um, sure, I think I can probably do that in five, ten minutes, less than that, I think. Right, um, thank you. So I think um, at the moment, uh, APNIC was the first region that had its regional meeting um, and we put a, a draft proposal on the table. Um, subsequent to that, um, RIPE has had their meeting um, and then I think subsequent to that, LACNIC has. Um, essentially, the APNIC proposal was uh, SLA. Um, which is really to replace the, car the current IANA functions contract um, between ICANN and the and NTIA. So we call that the SLA and, and our intention really, and, and discussing that with RIPE and LACNIC and everyone else, um, our intention is really to have a very similar contract to the one that currently exists between uh, ICANN and NTIA um, with minimal changes. Um, so we just really pick out the, the the part that relates to the provision of the number resource function by IANA. Um, APNIC's proposal also in, uh, encompasses and, and contemplates an AOC, um, which is the affirmation of commitments. Um, this is a document, so between ICANN and the US government at the moment, there are two uh, agreements, if you like. One is the IANA functions contract through the NTIA, and the other one is the affirmation of commitments um, with the DOC. Um, I, so I think LACNIC agrees with the AOC concept, but I think RIPE is not, um, RIPE's proposal doesn't include the AOC. Um, in my discussions with, uh, with uh, Andreas from LACNIC and, and with uh, Paul Rendick uh, from RIPE, I think we are all agreeable to not having a separate document called the AOC, but to have the components that we think is necessary, um, you know, from the AOC built into the SLA. Um, I know I'm using a lot of terminology. I'm not sure if everyone is following me, but um, the point to that is that I think we are on all fours. We're in full agreement that um, we all we need is an SLA. We don't need a separate AOC document, um, provided that some of the sort of safeguards and accountability stuff um, that is currently sitting in the AOC document is transferred into a SLA. Does that make sense? Um, the other uh, component which is different is the um, MUNC concept, which is the multi-stakeholder uh, oversight committee that's proposed in the LACNIC region. Um, now, I think some of us have not, not, not concerns as, as such, but uh, considers that the monk is probably uh, complicated for very few transactions that IANA, found, that IANA actually currently performs uh, for the numbers community. So in the last 12 months, according to the IANA's report, um, IANA has only performed eight transactions, eight transactions to, for the RIRs. So um, our proposal and our, our agreement, or our, a loose agreement if you like, is this, that any proposal to NTIA will not actually use the term monk or, or, or um, uh, oblige the RIR community to create a monk, but the NRO will uh, or can separately um, flag and indicate that uh, in any agreement between um, you know, the RIRs and ICANN, um, that they will appoint a broad-based community group to advise the NRO um, as to whether the IANA functions have been performed adequately by the operator during the past 12 months and that the NRO EC will take that into consideration before making any decision. So I think, um, you know, that being the case, you know, and if that's acceptable to everyone, then, then I think we are sort of sitting reasonably comfortably with the compromise position, um, at least between the, the proposals that's sitting currently between the three regions.
Thank you very much, Craig. Um, yeah, I thank you very much for clarifying both in terms of the documents as well as the part about the Mac, which is I, I think is quite a big difference uh, between different regions. I see Andreas the uh, hands up and Alan as well. So Andreas? Would you like to speak, Andrea? If you're speaking, uh, we're somehow not able to hear you, Andrea. So I'll first um, go to Alan and then come back to you again. Uh, hello, this is Alan Barrett. I'm very pleased to hear that the RIR staff have managed to uh, resolve some of the differences between the proposals. Um, I would ask that we post uh, either copies of the proposals or at least links to those proposals to the IANA Expo mailing list and also on the NRO's uh, webpage related to the CRISP function. Good point, Alan. I think that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, would either Craig or I don't know her man be able to help us with this, or anybody else um, able to help in posting this? Izumi, I'm happy to help uh, to do that. Um, I will um, perhaps draft something and. Uh, and check with my colleagues from the other regions to ensure that I have accurately represented our discussions. Um, and if that's agreed, then I will post that to this mailing list, and then, and then of course, we can then uh, transfer that to the transfer mailing list. That sounds wonderful. And I, I see the um, comments from Andreas that uh, he's very pleased with the, um, the summary that Craig has provided. And it's confident, uh, he's confident that we can settle with the diff little differences. So I think we're pretty happy to have you um, share the draft. And um, Andre, I, I recall you're um, happy to volunteer in drafting. So if you're willing, maybe you can also help uh, Craig in drafting if uh, necessary. And I think we can start from there and um, seeing if any differences that any of the community members feel from what's been proposed and then we can start discussing on the mailing. So um, does anybody else have any comments about what Craig has mentioned? Isumi Esteban Escano, I offer as a volunteer to collaborate with Craig in the drafting of the of the comparison between the the proposal. Great, thank you. And I also see Michael. And clarification from Alan that um, please post all existing proposals on the mailing list and website um, before Craig's um, proposal on which is after the collaboration. And last week's proposal was in Spanish, so there's a request for English translation to compare. So that might take a little, little yes, bit okay. of time, but I think it would be useful to have the links at the start um, on the NRO website so that we can refer to. Um, would um, a man be able to help us do this and uh, contact um, the RIR will present this on the details of the links and proposals as necessary. No problem. Yes, and, Thank you yes, very it, much. Isumi, and, and from, from Nagnik region, we will translate our proposal to English just to share with, with everybody. Thank you. 
Wonderful. Thank you very much. So, um, Craig, when do you think you will be able to um, share the proposal? The next teleconference uh, in the initial uh, plan is planned as um, 11. But that may perhaps be too tight for you. So 11 is tomorrow. <laughs> the 11th is, well, depending on time zone, that would be the day yeah. after so tomorrow. So that might be a little bit tight. Yeah, I think it's a little bit tight, um, but how about before the end of this week? Uh, so, so in the next sort of 48 hours, really. End of week, so that would be, they, why do you mean the 12th? Uh, before the 12th. So, 11th? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, um, the teleconference is actually tentatively scheduled for um, 11. So, let's discuss about the time zone and um, um, the time for the next uh, teleconference, and then hopefully we can have the draft before this, and uh, we can um, um, have discussions on the next uh, teleconference. And I do recall her man um, wishing to set um, a rough timeline for the dates for the coming teleconferences. So um, let's see. Um, so the next is planned for the 11th. We'll discuss uh, about the details of the time uh, later. And I think Paul has to propose the next teleconference to be on the 15th, 15th, 18th, and then um, the remaining is, I think, are listed as it is, 18th, 12th, 20, 22nd, 30th, uh, 2nd, 8th. The later ones might change depending on how the discussions go, but let's just tentatively have a rough um, mind that we'll have teleconferences on these dates. And um, we can adjust the date as necessary, but try to stick to the timeline as much as possible. And Izumi, thank you very much because, uh, yeah, I did mention that point about the, the Monday. I also mentioned the movement of the draft RFP response, the first one, um, to the IANA transfer list, uh, to move it from the 15th a little bit further down. I mean, seeing as though Craig will not produce this material till the 12th, there's no way we're going to get a first draft of anything out on the 15th. Um, I think that when we're committing to uh, write text, we need to understand that, that we probably need a very fast uh, turnaround for the text. So it's great that, that we volunteer, but if you're volunteering and it's going to take you days to produce something, you will hold the whole crew up. So I suggest if you're going to volunteer to produce text that you'd be willing to produce that text in lightning speed given the aggressive timeline that we have. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. So, yes, no taken about um, the, the draft um, schedule. So, I think um, you've suggested somewhere around the 18th, and I saw somebody else who's, uh, who's expressed support. So, um, let's target um, 18th for now. And, uh, Craig, I, I recall you mentioned you, you are likely to be able to produce the draft by the 11th. Um, am I right, or am I pressuring you too much? No, no, uh, definitely okay. by the 11th. So, um, <coughs> I do like the idea of uh, rotating um, the time zone, but um, to keep it simple for the next call, I do, I did, I do like uh, Bill's suggestion to uh, stick to the um, the same time for at least for the next call, rather than taking the poll again. Um, for the future. Um, teleconferences, I think there's more time to take the polls about the time zone for everybody, but um, do others in the call at this stage feel that they won't be able to attend the teleconference at the same time on the 11th? If not, then um, let's have the next teleconference on the 11th at the same time, and um, I do hope uh, Herman can send the details. Uh, to us again. Okay, I will do. Uh, um, I think I will have ready the mailing list, and I will use the mailing list uh, sending the information for the next conference. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And so just to confirm, so that's the next teleconference date. And then the to do is uh, for Craig to um, draft the, um, the initial draft. And Andre, uh, Michael, and I think Esteban? Or was it Esteban? Or I don't know. Well, I can't exactly yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah Esteban, you, you've, um, you've volunteered to help Craig. So I hope we can all work together in drafting it uh, before the next teleconference. Um, Alan or anybody else, is there anybody, anything that uh, you would like to add before we um, close this call? Izumi, this is Andre. This is just clarification because I had some, some uh, audio problems. So uh, I'm a volunteer for section three and four, right? That's how we divided work. Um, we haven't really divided which uh, section, um, who's handling which section. But if you, that's the part that you would like to uh, volunteer and work on. Um, yes, uh, please work on this. And then uh, collaborate with uh, Craig and uh, Michael uh, Lesteban, um, who have uh, also volunteered. So maybe I, I wouldn't uh, you know, say, OK, who's going to do this at this stage? So please. Uh, those who have volunteered, please uh, agree amongst yourself which section and how you would work. But uh, some um, notes taken that you're willing to volunteer on sections uh, three and four. So maybe you can discuss with others who have volunteered. Um, so it's Craig, Michael, and Lesteban who have volunteered. OK, so thank you very much. So if nobody else has anything to add, um, thank you so much. And sorry it ran out of time a little bit. And looking forward to talk to you again on the 11th. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Izumi and Gobin here. Thanks a lot for you know uh, bringing the things in a okay. manner. Thank you, thank Dr. Gobin. Yeah. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Izumi, for the good work. Thank you, Izumi.